the position that we take on when we're in that basic standard kind of hunched over, this is like, this is a position of depression. You can see when you see someone's body language, when you hear someone's tonality, that's what you're actually listening to. That's what you're paying attention to. Right. The words are very, you know, it's, they say it's like seven or eight percent of the conversation. The rest of it is how are we sitting? What's our tone? You know, if you can start to put all these things together and really be, you know, comfortable to start maybe exploring things that you haven't explored before, mm -hmm. play manifests. We're always digging roots. Right? Every moment, 100% of the time, we're digging roots into that place. We're connecting with that community. You are listening to the Optimal Performance Podcast. Welcome to the OPP. The OPP is sponsored by Natural Stacks, makers of 100% natural and open source supplements designed to help you live optimal. For more information on how to build optimal mental and physical performance into your life, Keep it tuned right here to the OPP, subscribe, go to naturalstacks.com and learn more. All right, guys, welcome to what may be the craziest, most fun, most raw and unfiltered episode of the OPP to date. Aaron Alexander is our guest. We recorded this one live, uh, well, not live, we recorded it in person on our recent trip to LA, uh, Aaron stopped by our Airbnb. It was late, we were tired, and it might have gotten a little out of control. You're gonna love it. Uh, it it's hilarious. There are some shenanigans, but all built around Aaron demonstrating and showing examples of how what he's talking about really does impact us. We talked a lot about how posture impacts physiology and how physiology impacts our feelings and our emotions and how those dictate decisions and, and lifestyle and that entire cascade of how that stuff flows. So there's a lot of references to Tony Robbins type stuff and uh, NLP, tonality, body language. We talk about play. There's a lot of really, really good information in this podcast. I know you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, there are also some of our typical hot seat questions that we asked uh, on that trip. And yeah, enjoy it. Go to naturalstacks.com. You'll be able to see the video, uh, which I think is going to be important for this one because there is a lot of postural discussion. You'll be able to see some examples of some stuff there. Uh, so again, watch the video if you can. That's at naturalstacks.com. While you're there, check out all of the other ways that we have for you to live optimal. Go to iTunes, leave us a five-star review. Let us know how much you like the show. If we read your review on the air, we will send you free Natural Stacks products. I'm gonna read you one now by Workout Nut 11 Says the best, love this show. Ryan Muncy does an amazing job. Great guests and great content. The questions asked really drive the show better than most podcasts. Thank you. If you compliment us, me, the show, we will certainly read your review on the air. Uh, so workout nut 11, thank you. And to all you guys who listen to this show, I can't thank you enough. Um, I, I've told this story a few times since I got back from the Biohacker Summit in Sweden, but when I was introduced, um, you know, the, the person introducing me asked, you know, who in the audience listens to the show and like three quarters of the room puts their hand up. And I mean, I, that that just blew me away, That that took, more out of me, uh, or I guess took me back more than, uh, than I realized. And, and that was just a really, really powerful thing to hear. Uh, because a lot of times this podcast can be a one-sided thing. Uh, you know, you guys are out there listening, you're hearing this, uh, but I don't know, you know, who you are. So, so getting to go to these events, getting your messages back, um, you know, whether it's on Facebook or, or Instagram or email or iTunes, um, you know, that personifies you, the listener to me, uh, and it fuels me to make this more interesting and better and uh, more useful. So please give me your feedback. Let me know how I can make this a better show for you to help you move your mission forward. Uh, and, and as always, thank you so much for being a part of this. It means the world to me. Uh, and finally, share the OPP with people in your life that you know will benefit from the things that we're doing and talking about here. 
I'm going to shut up and turn it over to Aaron because uh, he steals the show on this one. Enjoy it. Ryan Muncy is probably the smartest guy I know. Trust me, Muncy is the nutrition guy. Ryan Muncy's out there trying to make the world better for all of us. The Optimal Performance Podcast is bold, edgy, creative, entertaining, and epic. Ryan Muncy is my go-to guy. Ryan Muncy is he's the first guy I call. He's making people's lives better. Ryan Muncy's an innovator. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're in. We are in. We've got Aaron Alexander from Align Podcast, Align Therapy. Previous guest on the OPP mm. is sitting in with us on the hot seat. And apparently, if you're watching on the video, the seat is so hot that we must sit in unusual positions. Mm. It's Aaron, like a Tony Robbins. Why are, why are we? Yeah, you, I mean, you are exuding some, some masculinity <laughs> and some power. Why are we sitting in such unusual <laughs> positions? <clears throat> well, there's all sorts of reasons why we're sitting in this un uh, unusual position. One of which is, you know, you look at like yoga, for example, right? We've been practicing yoga for the last, whatever, call it 6,000 years, right? There's a reason that we've been cultivating these positions of, you can call it like lotus, which this isn't a lotus at all. This is like me trying to be as comfortable on the couch in a yogic position, mm -hmm. right? But the position that we take on when we're in that basic standard kind of hunched over this is like this is a position of depression mm -hmm. right so if you would go into like oh man like I, my puppy died or you know i lost my job or whatever it is crap like this would be the position right right throw a cell phone in front of your face here you are you're practicing that position mm -hmm. right and then all the science says that when you're in that position for a couple of minutes you end up decreasing testosterone levels increasing cortisol stress hormones not to mention disengaging the glutes shortening the hamstrings cultivating all those patterns of dysregulation or imbalance. So what I'm thinking about doing with this is adding more opportunities for therapeutic experiences and just bringing your legs up off the ground. We can get into like all the points if you want, but that's it. Well, I mean, what I hear is you, you just hacked sitting. I mean, yeah, if, yeah, like yeah, if, yeah. I mean, if biohackers are always looking for ways to optimize things while you're doing something, you're going to sit, you might as well sit in a way that beneficially alters your hormones instead of negatively. That's it. And, uh, you know, helps your glutes, helps your hips instead of hurting them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So this external rotation of the hip, right? That's like, you're we talking about Kelly, Kelly Starr before here. He's all about getting that external rotation, which act starts activating, engaging the glutes, mm -hmm. starts stabilizing the sacrum and the lumbar spine. That's where a lot of people end up having disc herniations. I'm like 98% of mm -hmm. disc herniations end up being lumbar yeah, L5 yeah. S1, yeah. right? So when we start to stabilize the sacrum, stabilize the lumbar spine mm -hmm. via that path of external rotation, mm -hmm. right? Gluteal engagement, then and on that we protect note, ourselves. A coaching cue from the strength and fitness world is always imagine spreading the floor with your feet. That's it. And that it's even though your feet aren't gonna move, you're thinking about external rotation, which is activating the glutes, which yeah. puts you in a safer position for squats and deadlifts, also helps you lift more weight. Bingo. You know, and so recently um, I borrowed this from Gay Cook. He probably borrowed it from somebody else. Um, but you don't you don't do functional movement you grow functional movement something like that you grow your joints that's not what he said but you grow your joints right so as we're in this position you could think of yourself kind of like being like you're you're molding clay right so if you're molding yourself into this kind of douchey folded can i say douchey you can say douchey douchey folded over position right you're molding yourself into depression subservience right right i would much rather mold myself into a position of like I like my life. Here it is. <laughs> it's great. I'm scared. I'm concerned. I'm defeated. I'm depressed. Yeah. Things are going okay. And all that like body language 101, this is a position, if we were playing poker right now, this is a position like yeah, my car, hand, my hand yeah. is okay, right? And so, right. you know, if I was bluffing, hopefully I'm not, but you know, that's this might be a position I'd go into. Right. And then there's the physiology that falls along. It's like, shit, I think Aaron and Ryan, they, I, I think they might be okay. You know, and then there's like the feedback loop of like, people well, you, start responding to that. Not only that, but I mean, if you sit like that, you stand like that, you you carry yourself that way. I mean, you start to believe it and you start to live with physiology that reflects that. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that there's, there's kind of a discrepancy of people kind of like fake it till you make it kind of thing, which I don't love 
that and I also kind of agree with it at the same time you know but I think that there's a the big component with the fake it till you make it that it lacks is the work right so you can't just all of a sudden like how like people ask me about like gait patterning like walking you know correctly or functionally or aligned or whatever Mm -hmm. you know it's like well start working with lunging start working with front squats start working with you know finding thoracic extension gluteal engagement start if you can do the work into all of these individual parts and then practice putting them together things like walking things like standing things like you know everything else you you create the foundation for it to happen mm-hmm. right so it's not just like okay just sit different you know and it'll all come together it's like sit different and you know okay yeah my high school basketball coach used to say that all the time the the fake it till you make it thing i used to hate it but- yeah I, I do. I, I think it has a lot of value, a lot of merit. Totally. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Let's, you know, let's get to some of the hot seat questions. We should actually talk about the things. Okay. Right. <laughs> 45 minutes later, <laughs> where are we? The seat must not be that hot. <laughs> if you could be any animal, oh, Jesus, what animal would you choose and why? Dolphin, dude. Fuck. No brainer. Eagle. Eagle or a dolphin. Okay. Right. So dolphins, because um, I like the whole telepathy thing, Mm -hmm. you know, so being, and I've, I recently, so we were just talking about surfing and stuff. I, we're here, what are we, a few blocks from the beach? A few blocks from, something like that. Yeah. Quarter mile from from the Pacific Ocean. So we got Venice Breakwater here, a nice little surf spot. Um, And dolphins just like cruise super close by on a very regular basis. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they're, from my understanding, they communicate, you know, a, a good percentage of their communication is via telepathy, right? Which I think human beings are doing that as well. We just kind of knock that stuff out because we're way more focused on words, right? Right. But, you know, again, more study, whatever stuff. You can see when you see someone's body language, when you hear someone's tonality, that's what you're actually listening to. That's what you're paying attention to. Right. The words are very, you know, it's, they say it's like 7 or 8% of the mm-hmm. conversation. The rest of it is how are we sitting? What's our tone? Dolphins seem to do a really good job with kind of letting go of all the BS and just playing, you know, and being really more like a, I don't know, just like a tapped in type place. Okay. And they live in the ocean, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever. Okay. Dolphin. Uh, or eagle. Re- reasons reasons for being an eagle <laughs> they can fly there's a lot of things that's they can it fly. there's a lot of things they can well, fly. They why fly, not choose them birds of price so my dad was a falconer growing up so we actually grew up like hunting bunnies and such with with birds we'd have like birds up on our arm and we'd hunt small game and such so i guess probably part of that is that but yeah you're like the you're like the shark of the of the air okay yeah all right those are the answers okay <laughs> Tell us about a trend or a movement or an idea in our space that currently has your attention and it could be for, for better or for worse. Play. You know, I think people are talking about play, Mm -hmm. which I think is excellent. I think Mm -hmm. absolutely for the better, Mm -hmm. you know, and and it's, that's, you know, I was recently listening to um, Stephen Porges, which is another guy that I'd recommend to have it on your podcast. If you, if you can get a hold of me, it's hard to get a hold of, but, um, it's the polyvagal theory is the thing. One of the things that he popularized, he was all, or I mean, he came, he's like the, he's the, he invented that. He's hypothesized that polyvagal theory. Um, and then HRV, heart rate variability. He was like one of the, the I, I think that was him too. Okay. Um, but one of the things that he mentions that I've heard him speak on is that, you know, finding good balance and tone with our, our vagus nerve, right? Which stands for wandering nerve. Right. So it's relating from our brain, connecting through most of our viscera, right? Our hearts and our diaphragm and our liver and all the things. I believe 80% of the nervous pathways are going from our guts up to our brain, right? So we're receiving all this information from here up to our brain, right? So our guts are telling us much more. So there really is something to the whole gut instinct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so what he has mentioned, which makes a lot of sense to me, when you can come to that point in your body where you can just all of a sudden be creative and start playing and moving and like, you know, now I'm, I'm a chicken, you know, or now I'm climbing the tree or now I'm, you know, doing acro yoga or now we're going to act and we're going to method act you know all these this is all movement right but we 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 look at 
a lot of us, we get stuck in these dogmatic boxes, right? Where movement is, it has to be snatches. It has to be deadlift. It has to be bicep curls, right? But laughter is movement. Dance is movement. Breath is movement. Walking is movement. You know, if you can start to put all these things together and really be, you know, comfortable to start maybe exploring things that you haven't explored before, Mm -hmm. play manifests. You know, so I think getting to that point, you know, of improvisation is uh, one of the highest expressions of the human form. And that's what dolphins do all day. Another reason to be a dolphin. Dolphin. Okay. First answer. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Alexander. A.A. Rob. A.A. Ron. You it's prefer Croatia. that? It's Croatian. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm indifferent. I, I like that. It's, it's, it feels playful. A.A. Ron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, of course That's you would like That's high-level Vegas tone if you start calling me A.A. Ron. <laughs> A.A. Ron. Yeah. If you could put any message, quote, or saying on a t-shirt, what would it be? Pause is one of the things that's been coming to me recently. It's something that I, um, I need to work on. And now in this response... I'll work on pausing because it really adds effect, mm-hmm. right? And also gives people space to breathe. It gives people space to assimilate and digest the information that you're giving. It also gives yourself a moment to digest, mm-hmm. right? And again, speaking on all like the nervous system stuff, you know, you, you really want, you know, tapping into your breath, right, is super crucially important for your whole physiology, right? Your whole state of mind, all those things. And I think sometimes we can get to the point, especially if a camera's rolling, right? Especially, I need to sound really smart. And I, and is, is the parasympathetic nervous system relates to the adenosine triphosphate? You know, it's just like, if you can step back, you know, and sit with yourself for a minute, all of a sudden, I think it, um, it gives everyone a moment to kind of, you know, access their parasympathetic nervous system. You know, so I would say pause, breathe. That'd be my one thing. Okay. If you had a son or daughter and you could only give them one piece of advice, one piece of wisdom, what would you share with them? Joe Campbell, read. Uh, That would be the first thing. And then I would say, hopefully, one of the things that you get from Joey is uh, follow your bliss. Right. So that sounds like super new agey, nonsensical, but I think it's legit. You know, so the sooner that you can get to the point where you are doing the thing that, you know, time flies by, mm-hmm. right? You're just like, yeah, I freaking, whatever it is, I'm surfing. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I want to be a professional surfer. It's like, be a professional surfer, do that, yeah. you know, or be a professional surfboard maker if you couldn't do that, or be a professional surf instructor or innovate the surf industry, right? But occupy yourself in that industry, right? you know, and really if there's something that really bites and really grabs and it feels like, yeah, like I am so alive when i'm doing that thing do the do the heck out of it right you know and and a point with that to think about if you're doing some nonsensical job or doing nonsense you know just whatever to think, you're not following your bliss recognize this is kind of in our conversation in relation to like moving in places we don't live mm-hmm. we're always digging roots right every moment 100 percent of the time we're digging roots into that place we're connecting with that community right right so the sooner that you can be cleaning the bathroom of the place that you want to be, I would say start cleaning that bathroom. You know, start making connections with the people that you actually want to connect with. Yeah, follow your bliss would be that would be like, like a really quick soundbite for my my baby boy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now I, this is a question I'm looking forward to asking you because yeah. you are in the world of of health and and coaching and and being a practitioner. Uh, you get to help people with their habits and kind of audit what they do and help them. You know, we talk about this with trainers all the time, you know, like, okay, if you're, if you're training somebody in the gym for an hour or three hours a week, what are they doing the other 160 some hours? Right. We're going to audit your life. Mm. Okay. On the hot seat. Dear God. Start, stop, continue. So on the spot, self audit. Yeah. One thing that you do uh, that you want to continue to do that because it's having a positive effect. Yeah. One thing that you have heard about and for whatever reason you haven't started that you need to start doing one thing that you currently do that you need to stop doing in relation to what you're just your life general things. Okay. Um, I would say I need to start finishing what I start, 
You know, so I have a tendency of partially reading books. I have a tendency of starting an article because I think, or like writing an article because I'm like, this is going to be great, you know, and then I'm like the, super excited about it. And then I will get excited about another article mm -hmm. and I'll start that article, mm -hmm. you know, or I'll have a tendency. I'll, that's like the story of my life in, in a lot of ways. And probably a lot of people can relate to that, but, you know, where it's, it's like the initial kind of like honeymoon phase mm -hmm. of anything is really excited, mm -hmm. exciting. You know, and so I have a tendency of embracing the honeymoon phase and then stopping as soon as I become bored. I should probably change that and really keep marching forth with mm -hmm. things. Um, what I think I do well, which is which is um, I should keep on doing, is uh, I do play a lot. You know, and so I do try to surf almost every day. Um, I do tr do acro yoga and acrobatic partner hand balancing, picking small females up over my head and hold them up in the handstands and stuff like that. That's I'm really like, bummed we missed that. We got an invite to do it. Our previous uh, appointment ran late. We yeah. missed doing that on the beach we'll do at it again. sunset. So keep playing, keep reading, you know, and so keep just being really excited and digging in. And uh, I'm, I'm coming to a point in my existence of the compounding of being curious mm -hmm. is starting to come, you know, I'm really witnessing of like, yeah, you know, I don't know a lot of people that have been curious about this niche for as long as you've been curious about it. It's starting to, it's like, okay, the way that you get to that point is by continuing your curiosity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so finding that thing and just keep on digging into it. I would say I'm doing okay with that. I should keep doing that. Okay. What was the other part? Something you currently do that you need to stop. Oh, like I'll habit. eat too much butter sometimes, dude. I'll have a thing where I'll like get all excited about um, just like fat in general. Like, you know, it's like now it's like fat, fat. Like everyone's like fat's where it's at, you know, mm -hmm. you know, slow carb and, or back carb backloading or fasting or eat a bunch of fat. And I will... It's like a drug addict, right? You can you can stop using the the heroin or whatever it is, but now all of a sudden you're addicted to fill in the blank thing. You know, I don't know, watching Oprah or something like that. You know, and it's right. like just filling the void. Right. And um, so emotional eating is something that I'll I'll do sometimes. You know, where I'll I'll be like I'll still be chewing, and I'll be like, dude, you're full what are you doing? You know, stop eating. You know, you know, you're going to feel worse because of this, right. but because fill in the blank thing, I feel lonely. I feel bored. I just feel like I'm not plugged into something. Right. And when I'm in that state of kind of like not plugged into engaging with something that I really love, um, the tendency can veer towards uh, emotional eating is what I would call it, which that might sound like, make no, it, it sound worse than it is, but I don't think it's healthy. I, I would say no, that, that it's not, but mm -hmm. I would also say that it's something that um, a lot of people may struggle with. So if you're comfortable, uh, can we ask yeah. a few more questions that, about that? Uh, yeah, so, absolutely. I'd love to learn about it. <laughs> I mean, are there, are, are there certain, you said, you know, when I feel lonely or when I feel like I'm not plugged into something, but yeah. do you notice like recurring triggers that, you know, situations that, that lead to doing that activity? Yeah. Yeah. So I stack my schedule with stuff like this, right. right? So because I'm meeting up with you later and because I had a big podcast with somebody earlier today and because I have, I'm teaching a thing next week and I have all these things that I need to be showing up with. And I norm, I regularly have clients that are coming in and I have to be some degree of like authority, whatever, you know, not authority, but you know, I have to be like, you're their healer. I'm there. Right? Yeah, I'm there for them, you know. Right. And so and so with that, it's I intentionally stack these variables so that okay, Aaron, you need to show up. Right. Right. Okay. When I get when I pull myself out of that, that I need to show up phase, right? So I've done a lot of like big traveling trips where I've spent six months on a motorcycle cruising around random places or hitchhiking with a surfboard or just like nonsense, like just going for it kind of trips. And there will be moments in those time frames where I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what am I doing? You right. know, and so you really have those moments of just like you're sitting there with yourself. It's me and me, you know, and in those times you can, you know, really sit with yourself and really experience like, what the hell are we doing here? No one knows. 
right? We get consumed by the job or by the, you know, the mortgage or by the, the titles or the egos or whatever it is. And we, 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 we kind of allow that to, to govern us and operate us. And we can kind of spend our whole lives doing that and then die. You know, but the, those moments, those existential moments where, you know, I don't have purpose, mm-hmm. right? I'm not helping this person with their squat, you know, or I'm not helping them with their neck thing, or I'm not talking, you know, whatever. Those are the moments, like the come to Jesus moments, you know, and it's, it's an option that you have is to eat or masturbate or watch YouTube videos of something that's useless, you know, or you can go a little bit deeper and, you know, have a sit. You know, that's when things like meditation or whatever right. could potentially come in. So have you have you read the book, uh, Altered States? Um, I'm sorry, Stealing Fire? Yeah, 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 I just so, read it actually. So, I mean, essentially, every option that you listed as a place where someone could go in that moment is an altered state, is seeking an altered state. Yeah, man. So, I mean, isn't that... I find it helpful. The book or going for the altered states. Altered states. Yeah. But I mean, some of those are, are healthy because you're in that altered state, you're able to explore why you're feeling this way yeah. and look for a potential solution. And some of them are more of just distractions or coping mechanisms that are maybe unhealthy and start a negative, like self perpetuating cycle. So healthy, you know, so healthy is an old English word is like help is H A E L P I think is how how it's spelled it means whole. Right? So so similar with like sane, I think sane sanity it connects back to to health, right? So it's all about whole integration connection. Mm-hmm. Right? So if there's something that is d- disconnecting you um, then, yeah, I wouldn't consider it to be healthy, but I would consider a lot of these um, more like, ex, you know, it talks about ecstasis and stealing mm-hmm. fire, right? These ecstatic states as being disconnects from the things that are kind of distracting your mind to allow you to integrate and connect in a deeper way. I know I'm going like way off the deep end right now, but what I've found is that through things like community is a big one you know coming together in communities like altered like traditional altered states aside like psilocybin or you know cannabis or whatever it is coming together and you know having you know you could be kundalini yoga it could be crossfit it could be whatever but people are coming together and they're you know chanting or they're rooting or they're you know breathing heavy together whatever it is those are all altered states Mm -hmm. You know, and what it does is it puts you into that that flow place, which causes you to strip away all the BS, all the the static turbulence from the day. Right. You know, and so I also find if you don't have that community to come together with, and you don't have a really strong practice in your individual self, I found cannabis to be helpful as an example. If we're, we're allowed to talk about that, you can, you can say that. Can yeah, you live in a state where it's legal. Yeah, we're in a legal state. Yeah. So but I guess my question is, like, if you have these healthier or, or whole options yeah and i don't mean you i'm not saying they're like why you but anyone who would do the emotional eating like yeah. why why would that be one that's chosen even though we may know look i know i really don't want to go down this route mm-hmm. and i know that the better choice or the healthier choice in this moment would be to go do you know kundalini yoga or just to go talk to somebody true sure. But this, that decision is still made. Why is that? But sometimes I don't think you need to talk to somebody. Sometimes I think you need to, you know, more Joe Campbell quotes. He says, um, paraphrasing, he says, you need to go into the fire to gather the treasure, right? So sometimes those those fiery moments, right, where you lose your job, you lose your girlfriend, you lose your blah, 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 fill in the blank thing, and you're in that deep, dark state of turmoil, you know, where it's just like, ah, it forces you to dig deeper than what you would have dug had you had a buddy to talk to, you know, or had you had some food or had you had like fill in the blank thing, you know, so I think that 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 sometimes it is those moments where you are kind of feeling, feeling your, your lowest or your darkest are actually the moments where a lot of the good stuff pops out. You know, and I've, I've found various different flow states to be really helpful 
with kind of like lubricating the that sounds dirty but like allowing the the good stuff to to come out sometimes i'll feel kind of like stuck you know and that feeling of stuck that's one of the most uncomfortable feelings you know right. where you're just like right. you're like stuck in space like nothing's getting done you're it just you know it's all it's like you're always either progressing or digressing so that feeling of like i think i'm digressing <laughs> you know right. like it's a really uncomfortable place yeah. and i found those those flow states be it you know all the, all the things that we potentially that we that we previously listed to be helpful like vantage point changers you know, when you're in that place of like, life's hard, life sucks, I just want to eat too much, I don't love myself, whatever it is, really what you need is, you know, maybe like some stoic philosophy perspectives, you know, where it's like you can't control the events, but you can control your perception thereof, you know, and so if you can just go in something to kind of rattle the snow globe for a second and just change that perception of that situation, change your perception of yourself, your values, whatever it may be, um, that's great, you know, and whatever you seek out as an individual, whatever seems to work for you, I'm on board, you know, but we villainize a lot of these things, and that's what Stealing Fire, which I would recommend, that's, I think it's a, it's like a revolutionary book in a way, um, it gets into all of that of like, dude, we've been doing this forever, right. you know, look at, look at, you know, dolphins do it with puffer fish. That was cool to hear that in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah I believe, I think, uh, what is it, lemurs maybe? They do it with centipedes, millipedes? I think it's lemurs, fact check me, right? But they take these these millipedes and, or maybe centipedes, but they have, you know, lots of legs, right? right? And they secrete this poisonous neurotoxin and they rub it all over their fur and they do all, all the things and they start going into this really like trance-like state, right? In our culture, we villainize that trance-like state. That's insane. Right. It's, it's ubiquitous throughout nature. Right. Animals are seeking this out. Yeah. Right, humans are seeking this out as well. We're just seeking out in really crummy, illegal you have to ways go outside the pale of societal norms. Yeah, and right. The pale the conversation. Norm. Right. Yeah. Right? So I think that if you find something that feels like it kind of pulls the veil down for a second, dig in. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, even you mentioned like the second you said cannabis, you're like, oh wait, can we say that? It's yeah, right. It's that. a real bummer. It's silly. All it does is just makes it be an immature conversation. You know, it's like we're all adults or whatever. You know, we're like, we're all, we we should come to a point where we can say penis and it's not weird. Come to a point where you can say like cannabis. You're like, you know, it's like, no, dude, like we're all, we can, we respect each other's decisions. It's your, your body. You know, it's not you doing whatever the thing that you do is like, I, you know, if it's, if it's working for you, who the heck am I to tell you? stop doing that anyway that's a different conversation it is yeah okay one final question and then you're off the hot seat mm. one book mm. i know you already said the the joe campbell yeah oh yeah that's a good one one other book that uh, let's say one book you've read in the last 12 months yeah. other than stealing fire mm -hmm. that you would recommend for our listeners i've been enjoying mastery actually robert green yeah robert yeah. green one mm -hmm. um i read 48 laws of power as well and that one i felt way more like icky mm -hmm. reading yeah you know yeah. but it's i think he if he didn't say it in the beginning of the book i've heard him say it on a podcast maybe where that's one of those books and maybe this is just what i've told people so many times that i heard myself say it yeah but it's one of those books where whether you play that game or not that stuff is going on yeah, so right, you I might as well be aware of it so yeah. that you can see it when people are trying to use it against you and, and that you don't fall victim to yeah. some of that stuff. Yeah, it was just the languaging of it. Yeah. You know, like I, I would have, what would have reduced the ickiness if there was some degree of like preface with like, I'm languaging this intentionally to be a cunt. You know? right. <laughs> like this is right. coming from the I'm just out to screw the world perspective, right? Which right. he probably did preface that, and I just missed that. But there was there was definitely parts where I was reading it, I was just like, ooh, and I kept reading, right? You it's know, good. there was it's, a lot of value. It's a good read. Right. It's it's worth consuming, <laughs> but, but but it was literally just like right. you know Ryan, you know Ryan is your buddy, whatever. But F and I'm like, oh no, no, like, <laughs> right. <I don't, laughs> right. You know. <laughs> so. But it is funny. I've read that book too, and I, <laughs> I see a lot of those laws, and, and and I see a lot of the transgressions of those laws occurring yeah. 
And it's one of those things where it's like, once you've heard those laws and, and seen that like, okay, this is a thing and how the world works, mm -hmm. you see examples of it all the time. Oh yeah. yeah it's That's it's one there. of those things. It's, it's impossible to not see once you've been indoctrinated into that. Hey, hey Ron, <laughs> we're going to get you off the hot seat. Oh, Thanks for hanging out with us. Don't let me say anything else. Uh, we, we are going to let you say one other thing. Oh, good. Uh, where can our listeners find more of you? Yeah. The hub is aligntherapy.com. Okay. And uh, from there, that's where, you know, all of the social media and everything spins off of. Uh, Align podcast is my, that's like my, my, my favorite child. If I had a child, uh, you're not supposed to say which one's your favorite, but that's definitely my favorite. I get to bring um, all of my favorite people into the same room, including Mr. Ryan here, and um, bring everybody together and have whatever the conversation comes out in relation to their expertise, but uh, a lot of things in relation to movement and psychology and how to make all this stuff work better. So I dig that. All right. Align podcast. That would be my number. Okay. Number one. Go check out Aaron on the Align podcast. Aaron, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks, brother. All right. Appreciate it. Oh,